night breaks, I hear the tires squeal. Red light can't stop, so I spin the wheel. My world goes black before I feel it. What's up next? 32, probably. Yep, 32. Same distance as my pads them or my tracks themselves. Now, notice that some of the space that was filled in beforehand is now no longer filled in, right? Because the 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 um, the basically it wants to create so much space around certain parts that the pad the polygon itself can't fill in this area. It would normally want to fill in because it can't reach around some of these pads here, and especially around up here against these big pads that are created for the pod, the board mounted pots. So I'm going to undo, I'm going to go back to 24. I thought 24 was enough, and you can see that only a few areas here can't get filled in. Just, we're trying to get around the dry pot, do stuff like that. Well, another thing I could do is I could always add to the dimensions. I'm going to go another, you know, a little bit bigger here. Let's see if that, did that change anything? No, I didn't actually make that bigger. There we go. Now it's a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can get around it now. We got around the top, but we didn't quite get around the side, so we can open up. Let's see here. Be bigger. Do we want to do that? Do we want to do it sort of an on equal basis? Make sure each side gets the same, you know, bigger the same amount. All those sorts of things have to come into play for you. I wonder if there's more stuff we can do with our design rule uh, distance here. And we want copper and dimension of 40 mils. Let's see what happens if we raise that down at 20 mils. Let's see. Oh, look at that. We opened it up a bit. Let's see what happens if we make our board a little smaller. Again. A little stuff to make it all smaller again. Now, see there? What, it, what I did is I told it between the edge of the dimension of the PCB and, the, and this polygon, you can make that a little bit um, tighter. It used to be a little bit. Let's see if I can. Well, I can't really undo back that far, but anyway, basically what I told it to do is um, go around, go around these pads a little bit better than it was doing before. Now what we've got here is we've got our in ground nine volt out another ground connection, another ground connection up here. We've got our pots across the top. Oh, look at that! Pretty cool. Now one more thing that I want to show you is that you need to be careful about your orientation of your pots. If we um, go to our package tool here, package, go to the full size pot, same thing, same thing. Okay, so now if we move all these up, put them back in the right spots again. To zoom out here so I can do this properly. So I've got all my pots set up here so that they're vertical like this. Now some people like to have things oriented a little different way. Oh, here's another tool that's important. This is our rip up tool. So basically it's the opposite of the routing tool. If you want to remove a track, look at that. It just rips it right up. That's important because, for example, now what I want to do is I want to go boop, boop, boom, and I want to set this up so that it goes in a V pattern. Some people like having their PCB set up like this, right? It makes you can means that you can route your uh, you can set up your knobs in a different way. Maybe you want your tone knob over here. I don't know. There's, you don't have to do it the way I've just done it, like this. You can do it any which way you want to. If that's the case here, as I route this. Now, the graphic of the pot itself is a little bit distracting, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it back to this package, and I'm going to put it back where it was. Now we're in a bit of a conundrum because now we've got a cross line. So, for example, if I route our line here, now when I try to draw a line across here, if I draw a line just like that, now these paths have crossed. When I run a design rule check here, it's going to ask the question of the PCB, is anything the wrong? Look at this. And it says, look at that. It says overlap. It says that's a problem. You can't have that happen. So I'm going to clear that error. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to rip up our track here and say, ask the question, how can I fix that problem? Well, one thing I could try to do is I could try to sort of set my, 
part here and then try to do a route up over the top of the other pads and go like this and oh that's so finicky now what happens if well if I run my design rule check well now it says it's too close to the edge of the dimension so that's not a solution so I'm gonna undo all of that okay so what's another solution I have well obviously I can go like this I can run my part like this does that solve the problem well in a lot of ways it does I can just go like this now connect things in just like that now if I run my design rule check does it ask me any problems nope everything's good to go that's positive this is um this is a particularly helpful thing because when we get to more advanced layouts um, where we are doing a lot of things what we really have to do is we have to um, like this is a, just a fairly simple well, I mean, we've got C6 as our highest capacitor we've got six capacitors we've got five resistors or seven capacitors five resistors and IC and three pots this is a super simple project right like it's not that complicated when you're doing a, an analog delay where you've got four bracket brigade chips and you've got four op amps and you've got transistors and resistors and capacitors and the you know like you start to end up with hundreds of parts on your PCB you really have to be careful how you route things single-sided layouts can only do so much right um, you can only go so far with these things before they start to you know basically be limiting you right now you can play with your layout a little bit more let's see what happens if I do some of these sorts of things oh it makes it a little bit nicer for me um, I'm pretty happy with the way this is laid out. Let me switch these back to um, my other preferred image. I'm pretty happy with this layout, actually. All told, this has become very simple, um, really, really nice looking. Um, there are a few different things that I like to do at this point that um, not everybody does, but that you, sh you should consider at least. Uh, here's one of them. I'm going to take my line tool now. I'm going to go to my 45 degree angle. And whenever there's a space here where you've got a 90 degree angle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little V. Look at that. And I had to double click to quit it. So now what I've done here is I've made it more like a space here. So when you when you etch this layout, that becomes easier now for the etchant to sort of recognize. Okay, there is this. There's there's this is an, uh, this connection here is a little bit easier for it to sort of etch out for you. And I'm going to do the same on anywhere where there's a 90 degree. And double click. And let's see where else is there. Oh, here's one. Oh, look at that. Double click. Turn it off. Double click, turn it off. More rat's nest things here. Doesn't really isn't really necessary. You don't have to do these things. But what I've done here by doing this is I've made it a little bit easier for the etch to sort of uh, show up. Okay. Here's another thing you can do. If you wanted to etch in some text, for example, I'm gonna press the text tool, I'm gonna go J M K. Now if I do it on the bottom layer. I'm going to do it right here like this, and I'll do this, and I hit wrap. Look at that, JMK will now show up in the copper itself. Now it's backwards, remember, because when it prints out, it'll print backwards, but when you etch it, it'll come out straight, straight forward, right? Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Well, notice how these lines are all sticking out, all these words are sticking out, right? We can also tidy some of these things up. How would we do that? Right? How would we make it so that the tone is back on top here instead of below like these other lines? That's an important button here, it's called smash, right? Separate name from part value. So I can go here and I can start to smash things up, right? And then what I do is I take my move tool and I can work, move the word. I can flip it up here, around. Same with these things here. Or what I could actually do is I can select the smash button, I can just smash everything. Smash group. Now, when I select things, for example, there, I can start to tidy up all the lettering so that when I put output uh, something so that I can, you know, have it set, show up for, for me in a layout, ready to, you know, show other people, 
I can, oh, another thing you can do here is with this text here, I can also affect its properties. Oh, that's not the right thing. I can select properties and go 30. Now the text has become smaller. It's now more manageable to sort of fit in there with the other one. Some of the size here. Another way you can do it is if you go to your toolbar here, you can go to size 30. Select, oh, I can go to other. 30. I just start to uh, select things. Oh, jeez. I probably did that wrong. Size 30. And select the eye. Look at that, it's shrunk. Ground 2. Nine bold. Ground 3. LED. You can do it to these level, tone, drive. Just shrink them up a bit so that it makes it a little bit easier to sort of look at them. The properties here I affected the side thing. I want to be tiny. There we go. And as I begin to sort of clean things up here, um, the layout really starts to come together, doesn't it? Right? Because now I've uh, sort of well, I'm sort of sick of 9 volt and ground 3. What, a, what about changing the names of things? I can go to the name here and I can go minus. It's just indicating that it's a minus connection for a DC jack. I can do the same with the plus 9 volts. I can just change the name to plus. It doesn't change its value, which is the 9 volt connection. But notice here I also have a hard time sort of putting it in a spot that I like. That's where my extra grids come in. I'm going to go to qu quarter grid here. Now I'm going to sort of fine-tune where I want the minus and the plus to be. Right, Fine-tune where the LED marking should be. Output. I'm going to change this to G for ground. Right, And I can go up here to this one and change it to GND for ground. You know, just have some fun. Play around with things the way you want them to be. This is particularly helpful if something is overlapping. You know, for example, if for some reason C2 is sticking up up here, you can now move it down into the center of the cap, especially if it was on top of a pad. You know, look at this one here. You can see there, it needs to be moved over and down, otherwise it'll get cut off. You know, making things all sort of make sense to you. And you can do this whatever way you want to. You should check as you go back to your standard view. You can see all the values are there. If you really wanted to, you can throw the values around, make sure that they're you know, in the right spots, change the size of them. You know, if you really want to, you don't have to. Um, I don't particularly feel the need to. I usually just export all my, all my things like this, right? So that last thing important to do is you need to save it. If you don't save it, it'll be gone. And there you go, There's, uh, there it is ready to go for being etched. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed watching this recording. Hopefully I'll be able to edit this down so that it doesn't take up your entire day watching this series. Um, but uh, upcoming um, future examples that we're going to be doing is we're going to do a layout for double-sided um, manufacture rather than for etching. And we'll also do a layout um, exporting. So both we're going to export this one for etching, we're going to expect, export the uh, double-sided for manufacture, and we're also going to show you how to upload uh, to Osh Park uh, for manufacturing your own PCB. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and remember that uh, these, this, all these files will be uploaded to, um, to, uh, to the uh, um, Pedal Builders um, United so anybody can use these products at all. I'm going to say free to use here. Look at that. This PCB is free to use if you'd like to do whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, so I hope you enjoy and have a great day. All right now, bye.